Good ideas come in all shapes and sizes, and some of the best ones seem downright crazy at first. That has Popular Science Magazine breaking down the 10 biggest ideas coming out of the science and medical fields as part of its first annual Insane Ideas <laughs> issue. And senior editor Sophie Bushwick is here with some of them. Sophie, good morning. Good morning. Insane really is the operative word here, isn't it? R right. It's sort of insane and visionary at the same time. Let's start with, with one that probably got the most attention of anything on this list which was the most extensive face transplant in the world, which happened at NYU Langone Medical Center here in New York. That's right. So uh, surgeons have been experimenting with face transplant surgeries for a de almost a decade now. But in 2015, they did the most extensive one yet on firefighter Patrick Hardison. He, um, his face was burnt in 2001, wow. and he received the most extensive face transplant ever last year. And it was a huge 26-hour surgery. There were 100 medical professionals working on him. And they thought there'd be a really long recovery time. They said he might not be able to open his eyes for six months. He opened his eyes after 10 days. And he's made an amazing recovery. Popular Science checked in with him this year. And, you know, he's the only recipient of a face transplant whose body has not rejected the transplant. So he's taking fewer immunosuppressants than he was before, although he is still taking medication. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he can, he can walk down the street and you wouldn't look twice at him. It just took really well. Life changing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, 3D printing has opened a lot of doors, but this one really surprised me. Northwestern is using 3D printing, Northwestern University, to develop a prosthetic ovary. That's right. They were looking at mice, and they 3D printed, they used gelatin to 3D print a scaffolding of an ovary. And then what they did was they harvested ovarian tissue from the mice and used it to put that on the scaffolding, and it grew. And when they implanted this prosthetic ovary back into the mice, it could produce healthy eggs. So if we can extend this, if we can make this work in humans, it has great potential for cancer survivors, because a lot of the harsh cancer treatments like radiation can destroy an ovary. But if you can harvest ovarian tissue before a, a girl or a woman goes through these treatments, it means that afterwards she might be able to get a, an ovary made out of her own tissue that can still let her have children. Let's right. pivot from the insane medical ideas to sort of the insane, I guess I would call it commuter ideas. I mean, how do you guys explain what this passenger drone would be like? How would it actually work for us? So this basically works like if the, the little remote control drone were scaled up enough that you could sit inside of it. So when you're going to work in the morning, you, you get up and instead of getting in your car, you get in your drone. <laughs> you can use a tablet to control the air conditioning and all that kind of stuff. But the actual flight pattern is being controlled by a remote center that makes sure you're not going to crash into planes or anything. And it takes off and lands vertically, which is much more convenient than, you know, traveling in a, a plane. runway or some sort. Yeah, exactly. And so the idea is that if you're willing to shell out the money for it, you could be going to work in the morning by air and avoiding all the traffic on the ground. All right. Lastly, we're talking about something really extraordinary here. Uh, we, we mentioned this before, but a solar panel factory grown on the moon. I mean, a crazy idea to start with, but what's even crazier, it was a high school kid came up with it? That's right. So this one is more of a moonshot, but the, the high schooler came up with this idea based on solar panels to, to power the entire Earth. So if you wanted to power the, the Earth, you'd have to you cover a landmass the size of Nevada with solar panels. Mm -hmm. So what he said is, and what other researchers are looking at is, let's put solar panels in orbit around Earth where they don't take up as much room here. And then you can beam the power down. But the problem is getting them into space in the first place is tough and expensive. So this high schooler is like, Let's build them on the moon. We can right. send a robot to the moon. The robot will be a miner, and it will mine materials, oh, wow. use those materials to build more robots. And so you've got this growing robot army, and they can all be building solar panels. And it's much easier to get those off of the moon because the moon's gravity is weaker than Earth's, and then ship them to Earth. I have to say, you did not oversell insane. These are truly <laughs> insane. Sophie Bushwick, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.